the whole like toxic wife, toxic mom BS. It's just not true. Being a mom doesn't make you less than. Being a wife doesn't make you less than. The only thing that we have when everything's gone is your family. My name is Ray Lynn, and this is my story. My real name is Rachel Davis. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a songwriter, I'm a country artist, and I guess now an influencer, whatever that means, <laughs> in this day and age. I grew up in Baytown, Texas, outside of Houston. The biggest thing in our home was the Bible and, and Jesus. My family had a church in Baytown, and so I grew up always at the church, uh, always serving our community. I wouldn't have anything without God, and I know that for sure. I was, you know, always singing every Sunday. I played the drums. So I grew up around music. Personally, me, I'm a little bit of a firecracker. I knew that I was a little too rough around the edges for Christian music, but I just loved the songwriting in country music, and I loved the honky-tonk music and the fiddles and the guitar, but mainly the storytelling. And so I went out to L.A. for a little bit for music and acting, basically put my name in the hat to sing a couple of songs at this little coffee shop. I was singing my song that I wrote, and this woman came up to me, and she said, you have a gift. Like, have you ever thought about going to Nashville? I met with her, and she was like, okay, I sent your song to 10 different people. I just want to let you know, we'll be lucky if two or three want to write with you. And she sent it off, and every single one of them wanted to write. And she was like, okay, we have something special here. So I went to Nashville. I was like, all right, I'm going to start writing country music. And in the middle of all of that, I find out about the auditions in Nashville for The Voice. I am not a competition singer. That was not my vibe. I was like the honky singer that had too much growl. I'm thinking you have to have a range like Mariah Carey. The girl that was telling me about this audition, she was like, no, that's the cool thing about The Voice is they want unique sounds of somebody that, you know, that's different. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, I do like Blake Shelton. I guess I can try it. I remember singing a couple covers, and then I sang my original song, and they immediately told me I was going to go to California. And I was just like, what? I was just there. This is crazy. I ended up making the show. Blake and Adam both turned around for me, Adam Levine and Blake Shelton. And in that moment, I mean, my life did change. I never, you know, in a million years thought that I would be on a huge national television show. My dream, you know, as a young girl was to fall in love young, have a bunch of babies, you know, all of us be on the road, we open in the bus door and Fisher Price is falling out. Like, that's the dream. When I told my label that I wanted to get married at 21, they told me that I was crazy. They were like, you know, you, you need to be available. You need to be single. You need to be this. And, and I think the coolest, the biggest rebel move that I ever did was I was like, I don't care what the hell you say, I'm gonna go get married. And I went off and got married. I love to look back at those people that told me not to get married. I'm like, look, I've been married for eight years. And what if I would have listened to you? Look at this happiness that I found. Look at this security I found in a human being. I would have never had that. I've never heard somebody say they regret having too many children. It's always the other way around. When I get older and all this is gone, and I'm rocking on a, you know, rocking chair with my husband on a back porch, hopefully on a bunch of acres. It's not gonna be the music that I put out. The legacy that I leave behind is through my children. Girls that I'll go to coffee with and talk to and they wanna get married and they wanna have kids, I said, do it, absolutely do it. This is all come and go. That is something that's gonna last forever. The whole like, toxic wife, toxic mom BS. It's just not true. Being a mom doesn't make you less than. Being a wife doesn't make you less than. Children don't devalue your life. They add value to your life. Having a child has made me a better artist. And that was a big reason why I felt more comfortable being more open about my beliefs. Because if I'm silent, what is that telling my daughter? My mom, she was married. They were split up. She met my dad and she got pregnant with me. And at the time, I think her and her husband were thinking about getting back together because they have four children together. I mean, they'd been married for 12 years at the time. She was considering to have an abortion. The quick fix is 
hey, I'd rather not have this kid and make sure our family unit stays together or have this child and she's kind of on an island by herself. She decided to keep me and um, I wrote a song about it called She Chose Me. And I wasn't gonna release it at first, but when I was picking songs for my record, I just could not stop thinking about She Chose Me. I really do believe that God gives you a platform for a reason. And so we released She Chose Me. Within, I think, two weeks, there was over 750,000 videos made between TikTok and Instagram and all these different platforms of women telling their stories of how they chose life. And we just had Daisy. So I was literally in my rocker, nursing my child, watching these videos, bawling my eyes out, because I was just so thankful. I, I truly do believe every child is a miracle. I've always been somebody that's advocated for the underdog. The unborn, they're the ultimate underdogs, man. My favorite part about country music are the stories that we can tell. We can be so vulnerable with our fans, and we can be so vulnerable in the lyrics that we write. I've always unapologetically loved Jesus, love America, been an advocate for life. In the music industry now, it's scary because everybody's like tiptoeing around each other. People are nervous to say anything, and I've felt it when I put out She Chose Me. Friends that have been my friends for 10 years weren't my friends anymore because I released a song about my story. You should never silence a person to speak and write what they want to write about. People relate to those stories, and I think that once you start trying to silence them, you're taking away all their creativity. I think music's gonna be a big part of the awakening in America, where we're gonna break those barriers, is continuing to write songs that change the narrative, continuing to tell our stories. It's important to fight for the right to write and sing what you believe. I think the best thing that we can do as Americans, especially ones that have a platform and a voice, is to spread truth and love. You gotta find your convictions. The more we continue to write what's on our heart and be more, not even just outspoken, but being unapologetically ourselves and standing up for what we believe in, that will kind of help change that narrative. Find those convictions that you have Find what makes you authentic and stick to it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, be sure to give a tax-deductible donation. It would mean the world.